What a charming welcoming committee. Gentlemen, I am Constantine of House Orsay, your new governor. I have no idea what sort of ceremony you've prepared for my arrival, but I would gladly skip it, so... <laughs> indeed, indeed, these are rather peculiar customs. I, I see, I see, it seems you were quite intent on serving me a drink. Hello? Cat got your tongue, gentlemen? Would it be those annoying beaks? <laughs> I am truly sorry these doctors should have shown a greater measure of courtesy. Thank you, dear doctors. Move along. Go and trouble the Nords. Pay no attention to them. Instead, just drink. The long voyages at sea require the appropriate treatment as soon as we land. According to our scientists, without fortifiers, you might catch your death, and that would be quite regrettable. I should have chosen death. This concoction is liquid torture. I would think that they would have warned you on the ship. Not in the slightest. And you must be Lady Morange, my predecessor. You are correct. There you are. To your health. Aha! You got your dose of bile too. Allow me to present to you Lady Morange, and to you, my dear lady, my most trusted cousin. Where is the captain? He seems to be preoccupied with some sort of admiral. Indeed. Then I will have to thank him later for this most marvelous voyage. Excellency! Lead me to the palace, I beg you. And, whenever possible, go by way of all the intriguing alleyways. I am dying with impatience to discover this new city. My city! Uh, your Excellence! We must wait for our escort! No need. Have no fear, for I am here to defend you, my lady. I've been scullied. How so? My Admiral laid me off. My cousin was nonetheless delighted with your services. I hope there was no misunderstanding. None, I'm sure of it. She just ordered me to give you any assistance you might need. This request doesn't seem to please you. Don't take offense, but it's not pleasant for a captain to abandon his ship. In any case, here I am at your service for a while. Excellency, welcome. It is an immense honor for me to be of service to such noble clientele. What might I do for you?
Welcome! Have you... Do I? See and sradi thou quint. That I could me in. Attention, soldier. Let me pass. I must see the chief of your village. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever could be so funny. Now, who would you be to seek an audience with the governor? I am Siora, daughter of Bladnid. My mother is Amal, the chief of our clan. I am here as an emissary of my people, and I must see your chief, your governor. So you are a princess, then? A what? Let her pass! Your Majesty, I shall present you to the Governor. Come. Princess, Majesty, you are most confusing. But thank you for your help. Dear cousin, what is this? Who is this amazing person in your company? I am Siora, daughter of Bladnid, daughter of Meb. My mother is the Mal, the chief of our clan. I am honored to make your acquaintance, Siora. <gasps> this is incredible. You look so much alike, you could be related. If you would allow me, Princess, I would like to confer a mission to my cousin. You need to visit the governors of the bridge and Teleme to give them my formal regards, that sort of thing, but also to discover what they've managed to learn. They've been here much longer than we have. Perhaps they've made some inroads to finding a cure for the Malachor. Forgive me, Mal, but I have a request for you. My people needs your help. I thought we might discuss matters together at leisure, but please, speak your piece. The Lions, the Bridge Alliance and my people are at war. My mother has sent me to you in search of allies. I fear that without your help, our clan will suffer great horrors. We have already lost so many souls. Hmm. This seems a sensible request. You know, though, we cannot go to war with our neighbors. Perhaps there is a way to negotiate a ceasefire, the time to see things more clearly. Excellent idea. I would be completely lost without you. Go and parley with, um, the Queen, dear cousin. Try and put an end to confrontations for the time being. I will come with you. It will take more than one person to convince my mother to lay down our weapons. Perfect. Take Kurt along with you and anyone you feel useful. I've been told that the roads are not safe. Safe travels, dear cousin. And watch out for yourself. I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sade, you have a moment. Thank you for coming. I know that you're very busy, but I need your help. I'm listening, sir. This island is vast, and we only know a tiny part of it. As you know, your uncle has asked me to draw maps to facilitate the merchant's travels. Alas, I'm slightly too old to be roaming the paths, setting up camps here and there. So I'd appreciate it if, as you travel, you mark the places you deem to be safe on your map. Very well. I will take care of it, Professor. Excellent. I knew I could count on you. Uh, one more thing. Do you remember that gigantic creature that you defeated in Serene? Uh, bringing a specimen to the city was obviously not a good idea. An accident was inevitable. But according to my sources, there are others of them on this island, and your uncle wishes to know more about them. I know that a scholar of the Alliance, Professor Serafedin, has also taken an interest in these creatures. I tried to contact him, but apparently he disappeared during an expedition to study them. Naturally, I cannot ask you to rummage through the entire island looking for him, but if you can find any trace of him, his studies on these giant creatures could be immensely useful. Very well. If I find anything out, I'll let you know. The road to knowledge is long and difficult, but this is the price of wisdom, Desade. Oh no, Menawi. Why are you dressed like this? Hello. I'm not one of your people. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. A legate? Is that someone important? Indeed. I'm in charge of diplomatic relationships with other nations. So you'll be able to help me. My chief sent me to trade some items with your village. But there are these bod irony who do not want me to set up shop here. These what? Bod Irony. The Ironbacks. The warriors who protect this village. Every time I come, they take my items without giving me anything in exchange. Please, I don't understand how things work here. Very well. Stay here. I'll try to clear this up. Adlo Radar on Olmenawi. May the earth always be sturdy under your footsteps. Be damned, it's Captain Kurt. Manfred! Still a quartermaster? Always, as you can see. What can I do for you? 
We've come to find you regarding the merchandise that Kurt was taking care of. Ah, the commander's cargo, yes. I was told that had come in. And so he's got you working on this. Lucky Kurt. It helps to have friends in high places. Is everything in order? Alas, no. Our merchandise has been unloaded into one of those dock storehouses. They're well guarded. A little less at night, but in spite of that, we weren't able to get them back. Since these crates are registered in the ship's manifest, make an official request. The modification of the manifest might have fooled a quartermaster, but it won't fool the port authority. We'd have too many details to explain to them, and our commander would not like that. What? Is he waiting for us to bring them to him, then? No, of course not. But Kurt needs to find the right storehouse, as well as a discreet way to get in. And he must also mark the crates that belong to us. Why is that? They're already marked with an inscription. Most of the men are illiterate. A colored mark will stick out for them to find, but they need to be quick about it. They won't have the time to decipher a name. I see. Well, let's see what we're able to do. Is there anything else? I met an islander in the streets who was complaining to me about the guard's behavior. Really? It would seem that patrols have confiscated the goods he was hoping to sell several times. Oh, I see. Indeed, I've been told about this man. The problem, Your Excellency, is that our orders are strict. Merchants who do not have a patent ratified by the minister cannot sell their goods in the street. And since your islander doesn't have one, I doubt he even knows what it is, my men have no choice but to confiscate his knickknacks. I see. Thanks for clarifying that. I'll talk to the minister. Is there anything else? No, thank you. How are we to know in which warehouse we'll find this damn cargo? I'm afraid we're going to have to take a look at all of them. I need a bit of practice. Greetings. You look like someone who would know how to use a blade. If you're looking for the best steel, you're in the right place. Weapons, armors, ammunition, I have it all. And if you have a special request, my associates will be glad to make it for you. Want armor that fits you like a glove? We'll make it for you. Minister. Your Excellency, it is always an honor. How may I serve you? What exactly is your role here? I am tasked with advising Governor Constantine about business matters. And I make sure that all business contracts are established properly and are favorable to us. I am responsible for setting taxes on goods based on their value, among other things. It is an exciting job that requires the utmost care. Would you like anything else? I would like to talk to you about an islander who's trying to set up shop in our city. Since he doesn't have a patent, his wares get confiscated as soon as he receives them. And you want me to provide him with the said patent? I would be delighted to show you the procedure to follow so that we may study his request. You'll understand that we cannot give an authorization without having determined the value of the goods beforehand. We must determine the tax rate according to this value, determine the best emplacement for this business. In short, 
These things take time. A lot of time. I'm certain that my cousin will be delighted to hear that our relations with the natives are progressing in a significant way. And he will probably be very grateful to the minister who helped their first merchant to set up shop in our city. Perhaps, Your Excellency. But our governor wouldn't be pleased if I didn't determine the fitting tax rates. Minister, allow me to insist. Alas, your insistence will not change a thing. I heard your request and it will be processed. It is only a matter of a few months. Would you like anything else? That'll be all. Goodbye, Your Excellency. This pencil pusher is as rigid as a halberd. Do you know how to make him change his mind? Sir de Corsillon knows all the subtleties of courtiers. He'll know how to convince him. Sir de Corsillon. The sad day, my young student. What can I do for you? I found no traces of Professor Serafedin yet. That's most regrettable. But keep looking for him, will you? You never know. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? I would like to enlist your help in making the Minister of Commercial Affairs see reason. Did our finickety minister of paperwork bother you? He refuses to speed up the procedure to create a patent needed by a native merchant. The poor man has already had his wares confiscated several times. Despite the fact that if he were given permission to set up shop in our city, it would certainly improve relations with our neighbors. I'm not surprised. This man really loves to lose himself in writing up pointless paragraphs. Let me write you a recommendation letter. He'll see my seal, and I'm certain that he'll become more compliant. Thank you for your help, sir. Don't mention it. Always delighted to help you, and to bother this annoying little man. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? Looking forward to seeing you again, Sir de Corsillon. Minister. Your Excellency, it is always an honor. How may I serve you? I would like to have another discussion with you about the patent for the merchant whom I told you about. As I explained, these things take time. But I'm listening. Sir de Corsillon was kind enough to give me a letter addressed to you. A letter? Of recommendation, I suppose. Ah, I see. I have no other choice but to accept your request. But I hope all merchants will not make use of the same special favors.
Here's the patent that will allow your protege to legally pursue his activity in the city. You should give him this copy, the other one will be kept in the archives. However, one of my representatives will visit his stall for the estimation and to determine the tax rate in accordance with the... Thanks a lot, Minister. Looking forward to seeing you again. Would you like anything else? That'll be all. Goodbye, Your Excellency. Happened. What is it? I was just bringing you the patent you needed to set up shop. The Bud Irony came back and they took my cousin away. He came to bring us animal pelts and new objects from the village. But the warriors came back. They took everything he was bringing me. And they also took him. Oh, I don't know what they will do with him. Please bring him back to me. I don't see why they would have arrested your cousin, but I'll try to find out. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I've come to see you again to talk about the Islander merchant. I managed to obtain a license for him, but he informed me that while I was taking care of this, his cousin, who was making a delivery for him, was arrested. I'm sorry, Your Excellency. Especially considering you've managed to obtain an official authorization for him. I'm afraid my men ran out of patience when they saw this hunter making deliveries for the merchant again. They wanted to confiscate his cargo, but the lad resisted, and he was thrown in jail for disorderly conduct. If you want to set him free, that's where you must go. Sorry, again, Your Excellency. I should have known you'd managed to obtain the necessary license for your protégé and told the patrol. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Gonna do for you. I'm looking for a prisoner, a native who should have been brought here recently. You're a bit late. He was sent to fight in the arena. In the arena? So this man was judged? Who pronounced the sentence? Whoa there! Do you really think that we would organize a proper trial for a savage? He attacked some guards. He's lucky he won't gun down right there and then. At least in the arena, he has a chance of survival, since apparently, he's a hunter. This man was only defending the goods he was bringing to his cousin. And now he has to fight for his life. I have no hand in this. I'm not the one who made this decision. They brought him here, and then they took him away, that's all. What did you do with the goods he had with him? They got confiscated, put in the storeroom, like all the rest. Anything else? I must leave you.
This part of the establishment is reserved for regular customers who paid an entry fee. Sorry, but I can't let you in. In that case, allow me to pay the fee. We're delighted to have you as a regular customer, Your Excellency. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs>